Right, 15 March 2024, and today I would like to give you a lot of news stories. There is a lot of news on a Friday. In fact, uh, most of the newspapers in Zimbabwe, they publish uh, a lot of news on Thursdays and Fridays, and I encourage you to go out and look at all the stories that are out there. The Zimbabwe media landscape has improved dra dramatically. Uh, the newspapers are doing very, very well. And also the online media is doing very, very well. Uh, it's actually uh, very important for me to summarize for you because most of you will not be able to digest all the news that is out there. And I want to thank you, Mkoma MS, uh, for always supporting me here. Uh, so let's get started. We've got a lot to cover. So the Zimbabwe military is going to be a focus for what we're saying here almost on a daily basis. We're going to be looking at the Zimbabwe military. There are massive changes taking place in the Zimbabwe military. Um, Nangabwa is losing control of the military. The reason why he's losing control is that military is controlled through intelligence. And Nangabwa has lost the, the intelligence component. Uh, I do not think that he still controls the intelligence component of the military. So what they're trying to do, uh, an ID, is to uh, have propaganda, uh, push propaganda to the officers at the lower level and at the high level so today i'm going to push for you a video uh, this was yesterday the address by kudam nangagwa so you remember that last week they sent jenfan muswere yesterday they sent july moyo uh, the day before and then yesterday they sent kudam nangagwa to address the military the zimbabwe staff college the zimbabwe staff college is the lower level where you get certificates and then if you get those certificates you can then go to the zimbabwe um, National Defense University and you become a full officer. So what they're doing here is they're trying to uh, control or politicize the army. I showed you what they were trying to do with these guys here. They were trying to politicize the higher level officers. And then yesterday they were trying to politicize the lower level officers. So these are the lower level officers at the uh, Zimbabwe Staff College. And you can see that these guys are younger. They are not the older uh, soldiers. And eventually, Mnangagwa is going to lose control of the whole security sector. No one is going to agree to what Mnangagwa is doing, uh, which is to try and create a dynasty. And on that note, there is a lot of confusion regarding communication. Who is communicating for the government? Who is con communicating for ZANU-PF? And certain factions have grabbed communication and right now zanu pf communication uh, military communication as i said yesterday is being done by the um, by zanu pf zanu uh, pf cyber team and if you know someone called john zimsara he is uh, in charge of that uh, zanu pf cyber team initially it was called varakashi for ed you could have seen them driving around in, in harare when i was in harare they actually drove behind me for a while and i thought they were <laughs> following me so let, let's um, Actually, Zanupiev guys are actually not the ones that uh, would attack a guy like me. Uh, other people are responsible. So let's quickly look at uh, what uh, uh, young Mnangaba said to the army yesterday. You know that they're not allowed to actually show us the address. So he spoke outside. And let me show you what he said. Here. David Kudakwashi Mnangagwa addressed students at the Zimbabwe Staff College in Harare this Thursday on macroeconomic stabilization policies in line with the Vision 2030. What we did was uh, go through a journey uh, starting from the TSP, uh, that it was uh, 2018 to 2020, NDS 1, 21, uh, 2021 to 2025, and then NDS 2, which will be coming in 2026 to 2030. I think the whole idea is uh, to understand uh, where we came from, uh, where we are now. And, and where we're going and, and the objectives uh, of, of, of what we're trying to achieve and the policies that are anchoring that. Uh, you, you'd want to make sure that uh, as you move along, uh, your policies continue to be aligned to national ideology uh, and, and the vision uh, that is there. And the problems that we're facing uh, are not a government problem, they're not a private sector problem, uh, they're not a citizenry problem. I think there's a Zimbabwean problem. And the best way to approach them is together, uh, which means continuous uh, uh, engagements, uh, consultations, and, and making sure that even in critique, uh, we do that in a, in a positive way. Right, so you can clearly see what uh, David Mnangaba is trying to do. He's trying to tell the officers that the economy is not being ruined by ZANPF and that uh, they must 
be patriotic, you know, all those things that you, polit you do when you're politicizing soldiers. And remember, these guys are not war veterans. So the guys you're seeing here, the officers, are not war veterans. You are looking at a crop of soldiers that will not be able to run after opposition and all that. We've got a new crop of, um, of officers that is coming. And as I said, Nangaba is going to lose control of the military. Within the next five years, uh, you won't be able to use the military in Zimbabwe for what they have been doing in the past. So politicians will be standing this side and they will have to do their thing. And the military will be on their own side. And there is a course here called the Zimbabwe Joint Command and Staff Course. It's a very important course. You need five O levels to have that course. And if you see the... Um, the report that we published yesterday by Dr. Mkanairi, uh, you can go to gambako.com, how promotion works in the army. You, you, you need this course, you need four O-levels, five O-levels to be able, sorry, my electricity is back. It's looking a bit uh, bright. I was in the dark, as you can see. So this course, this is the guys that he was addressing. Those are the people that are in the Zimbabwe uh, Staff College. They will eventually become officers. And the Zimbabwe military has been abused, especially the non-war veterans. And it's beginning. So what happening is now there are more of those now. War veterans are less, but they're at the top. And more officers are coming at the bottom who are professional, who are educated, who want to create a national army, which is very, very professional. And this is where Mnangaba is losing it. Uh, the third term bid that was trying to put in place is falling flat because the military is not going to support what Mnangaba is trying to do. So you, you must look at it in the context of what is happening. They are going to try every day to politicize the army. But eventually there will be a group of officers that will just be fed up and something is going to happen very, very soon. So we'll look out for the military action very, very soon. Uh, within a short space of time, we're going to be talking about something else. So you can obviously look at the websites. The websites are down. So they've brought down the websites, but I can go in. I know how to do it. So I'm able to go into those websites, but I'm sure ordinary people will not be able to do it. So it is deliberate. They brought down those websites so that the military does not have a, a way of getting in. So if you, you type, for example, uh, Zimbabwe N Z N D U dot A C dot Z W, you will not be able to see anything. You have to use other methods to go behind and see what is on those websites. These institutions are extremely important for the future of our, of our country, the, the Zimbabwe military education institutions, because the war veterans who were in the army were operating uh, very unprofessionally in a politicized manner. And Mnangawa could just phone someone and say, in <laughs> But now it won't happen. Uh, the new guys who are in the military are very, very professional. And we are going to see a dramatic change very, very soon with these guys, this crop of military that you're seeing here is not the, the old crop of military that was there in the past. And that is why ZANPF is relying more and more on internal communications. So this is their, their badge here, Zimbabwe National Defense University, very important institution in the future of our country. This institution is going to be, when you look at history, these are the, going to be the people that transformed the country of Zimbabwe. So I've been saying this for a while. I want us to move on now very, very quickly. We obviously can ask me questions in the comment section if you want to get some clarification. Let's look at news now. Uh, Chamisa did not tweet today. Uh, we're still waiting. This is what the last thing that Chamisa said about the blue. Have hope. God is in it. Change is coming. That is what Chamisa said, but he hasn't said anything. I'm trying to arrange a meeting with Chamisa, but it has not happened yet. So it will happen sometime very, very soon. Uh, I've made sure that we make those arrangements to meet with Chamisa, and I will let you know what happens when I meet with Chamisa. Then I want to take you to news. There's a lot of news, so I'll try to go very, very fast. We want nine minutes. We'll try to do this in 10 minutes. I want to bring this bulletin down to 10 minutes uh, so that I don't take too long. So let's start with the meeting between the United States Embassy and the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Zimbabwe. After that, those uh, US aid uh, employees or staffers, they were deported. There's been a meeting between the U.S. Embassy and uh, Zimbabwe foreign affairs officials. And the United States has expressed its uh, deepest, or what can I say, in, in very strong terms. They've said that the Zimbabwean government was undiplomatic 
what they did was undiplomatic. So I don't know what would be the effect of that. The Zimbabwe government has refused to comment on that story. You can go and look at that story in the Zimbabwe Independent newspaper. It's got a lot of details on what happened there. Then Mungangaba is likely going to reshuffle his government. You can see that many ministers are being sidelined. So I expect to see a reshuffle, especially Minister of Information, Gender, and all the other ministers. They are very ineffective. And Minister of Finance, you, might, you won't be surprised to see uh, young Mnangaba becoming the full minister and Mtulingube being pushed to another ministry, maybe industry and commerce or something like that. But young Mnangaba is probably going to be pushed up, depending on how strong Mnangaba is. Then the ZBC has asked its employees to move out of houses or flats. So this is the flats. It's Hartley Flats. And this issue is now in court. Uh, I'm sure I've got the right pictures here. They say they want to renovate these flats and they've given them 30 days to leave. And these people have been living here since 2009. They've gone to court. And so they want to stay there. Some of them are former employees. Then we want to look at the burial of chemist Ziba. Very strange burial. I've never seen a burial like this. And I want to play for you the video. There's absolutely no women and children, no family. He was a declared a national hero and he's, they're just soldiers. So I don't know what's going on. So just have a look here. So that's the burial of Kemi Siziva, a former intelligence officer during the war, who became a business person and one of the telecom moguls was working in Anas tribe Masiwa. And people like, during that time, there was a whole bunch of people in that space, like Adam Tuma Mawere and all that. So I don't understand why this burial was like this. There's something very odd here about chemist uh, Siziva's burial. So let's watch that space and see what's going on here. Then we've got the story of Mazbaba Ishmao Chokurongerwa. Mazbaba Ishmao Chokurongerwa appeared in Norton. He told the court that he's an angel. And the reason why he is in court is because he buried two women without burial orders. And the two women parents. So if you look at this one here, that is Hezo Chikunire. The mother is on the left and the brother-in-law is on the right. They are looking for the daughter who was buried without a better order. She was not informed that her daughter had been buried. Uh, this is Mazbaba Ishmael arriving. The one who is shot on the right is Mazbaba Ishmael. And he is saying he's an angel. His daughter, Lisa Chokurongerwa, she is the, ma, the queen mother at the shrine. So the, I'm going to ask the robot to read for you the structure, the, the structure in that shrine. And my belief is that they've buried more than 600 bodies over there. So the police need to do a proper investigation. Because what they did is if you die, within five minutes, they will have buried you. So something happens to you, you die. They take you and they bury you and they don't tell anyone. I guess there's, there's something that was a ritual of some sort that was happening over there. And the police were involved. He's been in this farm since 2009. I have personally reported on a story where the professor from the University of Zimbabwe went there, they gave him a wife, uh, for, according to the explanation that I had. They gave him a wife and he stayed there. He died, they took his body and buried it and didn't tell his family. So the brother was looking for him and he came to me back in 2019. The police have been known about this. The reports were made and they never followed up on these cases. So this Mazbaba um, Ishma, it's a Zanupiev issue here uh, that caused all these issues. Then let's look at uh, other stories. There is a young man here in the English Premier League, another young Zimbabwean that has came up. And this young man is doing very, very well. So I, I want to find his picture. Uh, okay, there is his picture. Apologies for the delay in giving you this picture. This young man made his debut for the Wolves. So we've got two young Zimbabweans now on the EPL. And this one is called, so let's remove that banner. It's called Tawanda Chirewa. He's doing very, very well. 
is going to be the second young Zimbabwean playing in the EPL. So the guys in the UK, you can watch that and follow that story. I do not know uh, much about the soccer. Mnangaba has congratulated the Chevrons who won the gold here in South Africa, the beat South Africa. So you can go and look at Mnangagwa's tweet. And then uh, Mnangagwa was in Victoria Falls opening the Diamond, uh, World Diamond Summit. Zimbabwe is no longer the chairman there. It's going to be another country. You can see that they've removed the soldiers from behind Mnangagwa. We now have a presidential guard in uniform behind him. And obviously we have a second guard on the right. Mnangagwa security is in a lot of trouble. Uh, he, he doesn't know what's happening. He doesn't know who's coming after him. And he is with Chuenga here. Chuenga is very respected within military circles. No one would ever attack Chuenga. <laughs> That's my understanding that if ever there was to be an attack, it would never happen on, on Chuenga because he's very respected within military circles. And guys would rather do something else, but they would never attack Chuenga. So I guess Mnangagwa is using uh, Chuenga for cover whenever he goes to these places like Victoria Falls because he's got so many enemies. Uh, then there was a visit by the ambassador of so this is uh, the ambassador of Sweden he, minister, he visited the Minister of Information and he, he visited Shava, Minister Shava uh, you can see when Shava doesn't have his scarf you can't see him <laughs> and then as I was saying, there's a clash in ZANPF regarding who, who has to communicate you can go and look at this letter where they are saying people should not just talk within ZANPF without authorization so let's look at other stories. They, in Blawayo, there is going to be a National boy, Day of Prayer on the 19th, an inter-nominational Day of Prayer, and also Senate um, Mayor David Coulthard. He presented the new junior chamber here. So very looking very good, uh, looking very nice. Panarebo. <laughs> the boy on the left is very tall. These are the, the guys who are going to be mayors and uh, all that in um, the junior chamber of Blaue. Blaue is becoming the most organized city. They are currently in the process of fixing the roads. So the, the work that David Coulthard is doing in Blaue is very important. And I did see that they're actually working in front of my house. So this is amazing. Uh, I, I wanted to show you, but if I open Twitter, the things that come out on Twitter, <laughs> when, I, when I scroll down, I don't know what's happening with my Twitter. So, so many bad things happen. But you can go and look uh, on Twitter. There's a lot happening in Bulawayo uh, in terms of development. So I hope that that works out. Uh, we've got a serious problem in our country in terms of development. And Bulawayo is actually a very nice place. It's strategically placed next to Botswana next to South Africa, and you can easily go to Victoria Falls from Blois. So it should be doing very well, but currently it's not doing very well. And then let's look at um, Robin Vela. Robin Vela has issued a full-page statement explaining why BDO is lying about his case and he's created a website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the robot to find that statement and read it for you. Uh, the reason why we don't use the robot a lot is that it's very expensive. So when we use robots, it costs us per character to use the robot. So that is one of our most expensive uh, input cost using the robot. We don't use the robots that the cheap robots that other people are using. We're using a very expensive AI robot, and that is very very expensive. Text to speech is one of the most expensive because it's like yesterday we read you a 51 minutes document, and that takes one minute. That's why it's so expensive. So we we are trying to get funding, uh, obviously, so that we can expand and build our head office in Harare, because the media is going to become very very important going forward. You don't want to have a country where you don't know what's happening, and the fear that people have is because they don't know what's happening. And I'm Nangagwa, and all those guys in the military, they're not scary. They're just people like you and me. So if you you see why people are afraid is because things happen in the private. So you don't know what's happening. You're afraid that something's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen to you. I go to Zimbabwe and I walk there. Nothing happens to me. Nothing's going to happen to you. If Mnangaba tries to kill me, no one is going to... <laughs> like, imagine that. So those days of fear, 
of people being afraid and thinking, oh my God, these guys are powerful, are over. And you now have these military guys who are, who are trying to make changes to things here. The days of Anamnangaba are numbered. You are entering a post Anamnangaba era and our country will develop and work out. If you continue with this system, which is so, so problematic, where people like Scott during their campaign uh, killed uh, Pastor Nasai and get away with it and arrested, no investigation, nothing. That is what is going to make your country a banana republic. So even the people in Zan, they don't, they should not support that. Even people in the military. Do you think anyone benefits from the military when you kill someone? Or you go and kill Pastor Masai? Well, who benefits in Zanu from that? Except for Scott. So if Scott kills someone during a campaign, he must not be allowed to walk around Scott free. Like Scott free. They must arrest those guys. That is why we are here as a media. So that we say what is happening and then the country takes action. And that's why you see that we don't even fear anything. Like, uh, you should not even think I look left or right when I'm walking. I don't. Because I know that the days of people driving fear into the people are over. Those days, when Nangawa see me, he must be afraid. Not me. Or when Nangawa sees Chamisa, he must be afraid. Not Chamisa. That's how this thing should work. And that's why we need a very strong, vibrant media. And that is why Mnangagwa has been buying up all the newspapers, all the social media. Uh, Mnangagwa has basically been going to every social media and buying it. And that is why you see that there's only Gambakwe left now. Because what Mnangagwa thought was that uh, Gambakwe was finished. <laughs> like, they, that's what they thought. Uh, but, uh, we must not worry about Gambakwe. That's why you see Kuti. They went and bought Jesus my media platforms. Is. They even went to some of my guys and paid them uh, and with lots of problems but obviously i've been in this space since it, uh, i was at nast i was a publisher of the nast observer in 1997 so you can imagine what we, we can easily uh, circumvent whatever the plans they have and we're entering a new period that is the truth we're entering a new period and we need to make sure that this new period does not eventually result in something worse so we need to be very vigilant and make sure that the media works and uh, everyone who is in the media space is going to be very very important that's why i always refer you to other media platforms and go over there and make sure that you understand what is going on so i want to wrap this up we're on 22 minutes it's a friday i've got a lot of conferences and i'm going to be traveling over the next three weeks as we we mentioned here i'm going to be traveling so there might be changes in my schedule over the next three weeks because of the traveling that i'll be doing but the plan is that uh, later this year, I must be in the United States and then we'll do Australia, we'll do New Zealand and then we'll do offline in 2025. We should start going offline uh, so that we start having other ways of broadcasting, which is bigger and, and make the media bigger. We've got many, many big plans for the media in Zimbabwe. Now, let me quickly look at the comments and then we'll wrap up. Um, Mkoma um, Gilbert, thank you very much and good morning. Uh, let's look at Mkoma uh, MS. Mkoma MS is saying, no way they bear over 600 bodies to the authorities pouncing on them. Yeah, we told uh, the police that time when the professor was buried, Kuti, this guy has been buried here. They went there. And I don't know, they, I don't think they did an exhumation. So what this guy has been doing is when children are dying like two a day, he would take the body of a child, Agafa, like now. They'll bury him, like within five minutes. And when they bury, they don't bury in a new grave. They put the person on top. So yesterday there was an exhumation. So let's wait and see how many people did they find in those graves. Also, remember there's also the issue of burning of bodies and all those kind of things. You don't know what they could have done. Because the women were being kept in captivity. They could not get off the farm. And uh, there was intermarriages and all those kind of things happening. They are currently bouncers right now at the, at the farm. They've not been chased. And the situation is continuing. It's not finished. It's still there. So it, it's still the same. If you go now today the farm, all the young kids who are married are still married. All the people that were in captivity are still in captivity. 
Uh, you can go and have a look at that in the H metro. Nothing has changed. The police, they only arrested Mazmaba Ishmael. They didn't change anything on the farm. Whereas they should go there and remove the whole system, which is there at that farm. Uh, the farm is called Lily Farm. It's in um, Yambira. So they should have gone there and removed the farm and removed everyone from that farm, but they didn't. And Lisa is there. She, she's the, the one in charge. So Lisa, this young girl here, she's the one who's in charge here at the farm with her husband. She's also married there uh, by someone. So she's still there and she's the one who's controlling all the women, 120 women and children. So we're talking about over 1,000 people at this place. And one guy could be married to four or five women. Uh, the team, which is called the... Um, uh, I don't know what they call it, the Council of Elders is the worst team that you can find. They, they do all sorts of things over there. So that is the problem that we have by Panama's Baba Ishma Chokurongel. He's a, a ZANU-PF member. And when they do those campaigns, they're going over there, they don't want to mess with my poster. Remember my poster, they're the ones who are the ones who They beat up the police some time back. This is a violent group of people. They are not normal, and yet they've got uh, political support and backing. Right, let me look at the last comment. Come on, come on. Uh, Prince is saying David Cotter is doing a good job. Yes, Cotter is doing a good job. Blawa is going to do very, very well. Very soon, we're going to have water, and we're going to have lights. There was one time when Blawa was doing so well. I walked in Blawa, and there was lights everywhere. At the moment, there's so many petty thieves in Blawa. If you park your car, they smash your car immediately. Uh, and so they need to deal with that. Uh, there's also people selling on the side of the street. They must remove all those uh, people on the side of the streets. Make Blawa as clean as it was before. Uh, business is booming in Blawa. If you drive in Blawa, all shops are working their functional. Although now we're having shortages. So starting this week, uh, there's been a shortage of food uh, in Zimbabwe starting. Uh, shelves are starting to empty up. Because I, I don't know whether it's a supply chain issue or it's a pricing issue, but there is a very big problem happening over there. And then Mukoma um, saying, I've seen lots of propaganda posts by individual supporters. Always talking of propaganda, of progress. Yes. Uh, and then Mukoma MSC, they could find no more than take buried bodies. Yes. I think le let's agree that you cannot just bury someone without telling the parent. Mkoma, I, I, you can, we can give other uh, things to say, why did you do it? But you can't take someone's child and then bury them after five minutes of death and then tell no one. And then marry of 80 olds. Uh, Ishmael himself is married to four girls who are under 18. The, the whole list, we'll give you the whole list uh, later on when I ask the robot to read this. This is a, a serious cult. A serious cult. M M Zimbabwe, there are so many cults now. Especially my post story. Those guys are a problem. Uh, they need to be dealt with. They're even a problem here in South Africa. My post story. The things that they do is, is seriously a problem and um, they need to be dealt with. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let's recap. Uh, David Mnangaba has addressed the military. He says that, uh, and this is the Zimbabwe Staff College, he says the problems in Zimbabwe are not caused by the government. And this group of officers is not war veterans. They're trying to politicize the middle level before they become officers. This follows previous meetings by which were addressed by July Moy, the Zimbabwe National Defense University, and also Jen Fan Musuere on NGOs and social media. So this one is on the economy. They're trying to say that it's not uh, the government's problem. I believe that Nangabwa is going to reshuffle very soon. I believe that because of poor intelligence, uh, security around Nangabwa is threatened. Nangabwa has got very poor intelligence, doesn't know what's going on. And eventually some military officers are just going to be fed up and take action especially the new non-war veterans ministers. And then let's go out with that video by Kudam Nangawa. I just want to play it for the guys who are not here. We played it, and then we'll wrap up uh, this broadcast. I'll be back tomorrow. And obviously, we said the burial of chemist Siziva. Very strange. Uh, it was only soldiers there. I don't know if his family was sitting somewhere else, but I only saw soldiers. And it's as if uh, there was no one else. So let's look at what... David Kudakwashi Mnangagwa addressed students at the Zimbabwe Staff College in Harare this Thursday on macroeconomic stabilization policies in line with the Vision 2030. What we did was uh, go through a journey uh, starting from the TSP 
uh, that it was uh, 2018 to 2020, NDS 1, 21, uh, 2021 to 2025, and then NDS 2, which will be coming 2026 to 2030. I think the whole idea is uh, to understand uh, where we came from, uh, where we are now, and, and where we're going, and, and the objectives uh, of, of, of what we're trying to achieve, and the policies that are anchoring that. Uh, you, you'd want to make sure that uh, as you move along, uh, your policies continue to be aligned to national ideology uh, and, and the vision uh, that is there. And the problems that we're facing uh, are not a government problem, they're not a private sector problem, uh, they're not a citizenry problem. I think there's a Zimbabwean problem. And the best way to approach them is together, uh, which means continuous uh, uh, engagements, uh, consultations, and, and making sure that even in critique, uh, we do that in a, in a positive way. Right, so I don't know why my volume is so low to me on my side here. I'm going to talk to our provider to see why we have low volume on, on these videos. Because sometimes when I watch this thing and I find very low volume. So we'll see what, what's causing all this. But in short, Kudam Nangaba has addressed the, 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 the military officers, the commander level. And he says that the problem is not the government, which is wrong. Uh, there's no currency in Zimbabwe. If you don't have a functional currency, the economy will never work. The Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is incapacitated. Uh, the Minister of Finance, Mutuli Ngobe, is incapacitated. There is no plan. Nangabwa has got no plan. There is no one who can say, we are waiting for Nangabwa to do this thing so that the economy can work. Nangabwa is done. He's finished. His term is gone. And we're now in the post Nangabwa era. Nothing is going to happen under Nangabwa except uh, speeches and skits. That's all you're going to hear. You're not going to see any change under the current approach that Nangabwa is taking. That is the problem that we have. <laughs> and this is it thank you very much everyone for watching and i really appreciate all the views that we're getting uh, we're starting to make a lot of traction and i, I think this is showing us that um, obviously people are appreciating the work the hard work that we're putting in thank you very much and a good day